Saint Raphael and Mary and the Eucharist. Author, Immaculata Yenyes ACI. Introduction. On the last day of the year 1891, Mother Sacred Heart wrote to Father Hidalgo, telling him that she had felt a special desire. She wanted to commit herself by a perpetual vow to live always in perfect observance, in profound humility, and in the most perfect mortification possible, to the greater glory of your most loving heart. She wrote that she would make the offering during Mass, specifically after Communion. Mother Sacred Heart made this vow on the date chosen. She kept the page among her other papers and 14 years later, already in Rome, took it afresh in her hands. It was then that she realized that she had forgotten to sign it. She would do it now, the 1st of March 1907. The saint thought the day of finding it was providential, and having come into my hands providentially, 14 years after having made it, I sign it today, in Rome, feast of the Annunciation of the Most Holy Virgin and Incarnation of the Son of God, in our house in this city. On this same day, in Cordova, in 1865, in the parish church of St. John, now our church, I made my vow of perpetual chastity, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Rome, the 25th of March 1907. Distinct moments of a life, marked by the same fundamental option. They were not the only ones, perhaps not even more important than others. Simply to mention some, 1857 was the year of her first communion. 1877, that of her first religious vase. 1888, that of her perpetual profession. 1922, that of her first serious illness and first viticum. 1924, December, the final viticum. Certainly that day was Thursday, because Mother's Sacred Heart wished to unite a final commemoration of the Last Supper of Jesus to this moment. Any of these moments, some officially solemn and others intimately sacred, always meant the offering of the whole of her being, consumed in the celebration of the Eucharist. Fela Mary and the Eucharist is the title of this talk. Rather than a conference, I would like it to be a joyful sharing. Because we could all contribute something to the theme. So I am perfectly tranquil as I start my paper. I am more than sure that it will be received with pleasure, because the protagonists of the history that I am presenting are already in our minds and in our hearts. In any case, it would be rather pretentious to think of giving a full account of all that the title contains. It is as if we had to explain the ultimate reason for a person's being, of her finest desires, of the character of the institute she founded, the special color of all her initiatives, with the peculiar air of the family. From the point of view of chronology, the Eucharistic experience of Raphaela Mary would begin with her first communion and end with her death. Nevertheless, we would have to leave on one side any introduction to this history that would lead us into the atmosphere of the family, a true home of faith. Even before receiving communion for the first time, Raphaela Mary must have had some intuition of the mystery which was to mark her so profoundly. But, even observing the limits of the official chronology, from 7 to 70 plus years of age, how much of the Eucharist we find in this life, how many celebrations intimate or solemn, how many sacramental communions, how many hours of adoration from the Praedio and from her life, how many rapid visits to the Blessed Sacrament, how many endless hours of dialogue from the High Choir of so many churches, how much Eucharist, how much generous self-giving to others, how much availability for the apostolic mission, how much free and joyful service, how much coming and going from the Praedio to life, from life to prayer, from Joe Isaro in hope, from the pain of absence to the joy of the presence. To love the Eucharist gave meaning to each moment, christened her deepest feelings, made suffering bearable and joy fulfilled. Eucharist, lived and adored in an ever-growing way, made Raphaela Mary a saint and converted her into a paradigm of a handmaid of the Sacred Heart. Paradigm as well of the whole ACI family. Returning to the biography of Raphaela Porras convinces the reader that the Eucharist was the natural context of her relations with God. Eucharist filled her life entirely, directed her gaze, gave her strength to respond with constant faithfulness. Presence of Christ, contemplated and loved, illuminated the eyes of her heart, and her illuminated eyes found the presence in all the realities of this world. 
there would be privileged moments in which she would grasp the grandeur and dignity of the human person in a mysterious, mystical way. But even before reaching them, from her first youth, she had united the joy of intimate encounter with God to the demands of giving herself to others. M. Precious Blood, an exact contemporary, tells us that when she lived in Pedro Abad she was experiencing a stage that could be called time of service. Every day, after taking part in the parish mass, she went round the outskirts, visiting the poor and the sick of the village. That is to say the daily Eucharist, memorial of love to the end, prepared her for an attitude of vigilance, kept her eyes and her heart open towards those whom Christ loved with a preferential love. Her constant assimilation of the Word of God also prepared her for the Eucharistic celebration. The participation in the table of the bread and of the Word had guided her from the beginning towards communion and commitment in favor of those most in need. Years later, by now foundress and superior general of the handmaids, Raphaela Mary had occasion to draw out the consequences of that intuition that there in Pedro Abad had been an initial response to God's call. She would begin works and establish communities in various places, always with the interior fire of a charism that introduced her daily into the mystery of faith and would push her to pour herself out in proclaiming the gospel and giving herself to all. She never recognized any division between the sacramental celebration and the vital demands of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the key to the church, and we handmaids have the charism of a special living out of this sacrament of our faith. Like every charism, it is a gift received in order to share it with all, but in a singular manner with those who make up the ACI family. We handmaids receive the treasure of our vocation from hands of Raphaela. Her life is a sure way in the search for our identity, an identity which is built up day by day and conserved with creative fidelity, constantly renewed. That is why we ought to return over and over again to Raphaela Mary's words, gestures, attitudes. That is why we have come together these days in a Eucharistic assembly, because we continue our search and because we want to walk the road together. We shall center our reflection on four points. 1. The encircling presence of God discovered in all things. 2. Communion and community. 3. The extraordinary announcement, the risen Christ recognized in the Eucharist. 4. Celebrating the great feast of life. The encircling presence of God discovered in all things. We are speaking of Raphaela Mary, a person who dedicated a great part of her life to looking at, to contemplating God. We cannot count the hours she spent looking at the sacred host, seeing beyond appearances, discovering the hidden greatness of the love of Jesus. In her charism of adoration, there was certainly a basic component, naturally, of admiration. A. This beautiful world, place of encounter and contemplation. By temperament, but even more by grace, Raphaela Mary was an eminently contemplative person. She had an extraordinary facility for passing beyond the surface and reaching the heart of things. By instinct, she fixed her limpid eyes on all that was good and beautiful, and glimpsed the transcendent through any reality. How immense is our God, what happiness to have such a great God, is the exclamation of someone who never ceases to be amazed at the sight of the sea. We have evidence of her joy in contemplating many other spaces, and very diverse ones, the starry night, the dark night without a moon, with the twinkling of thousands of luminous points, flowers, the changing colors of nature, the clouds flying by and covering, then uncovering the sun, the snow, a kind of miracle, something which, like the sea, does not belong to the world of her childhood experiences. Her amazement before the marvel of nature is reflected in many of her expressions, and always the gaze of her heart, which sees further than the eyes, which perceives by faith the one who diffusing showers of grace, in haste among these groves his path he took. St. John of the Cross Raphaela Mary retained the capacity for intense appreciation of the simple joes of life until her last years. She valued physical beauty and good taste. She was very careful of order and cleanliness, which were for her something like the beauty of humility. She liked good humor in the communities, and spontaneous conversations. She was in enthusiastic admiration at seeing a beautiful city, well-lighted and with artistic buildings. In this sense, Rome dazzled her. Words failed her in describing it. 
liquid music was always an object of her attention, above all the music of the liturgy, which raised singing to the category of solemn dialogue with God. B. The Human Face of God The eyes of Raphaela Mary, eyes of the heart, which looked with sympathy on all the realities created by God, tamed to be dazzled one day in 1888, with a special illumination. That day, during the spiritual exercises, she understands the grandeur and dignity of the human person in an extraordinary manner. The experience is so strong that it seems to draw her soul out of her body. She does not know how better to explain it. From that moment she understands, without any need to spend time in considerations, that the image of God in man is something indelible. It could be spoke by sin, but there it will be, like a divine stamp, even in the greatest sinner. All through her life, Raphaela Mary related to very different kinds of people, and she looked at all of them with reverence, with the wondering eyes of one who contemplates images of God. She was a genuine humanist, capable of distinguishing the infinite shades of humanity and giving them all the gift of her tenderness. To children, cherishing the life just beginning. To young people, accepting their inexperience, their blunders with understanding. To the old and the infirm, supporting and consoling their weakness. From that day in 1888, her natural contemplative instinct was transfigured by the constant presence of the image of God. The face of her Lord, alive in every person, shook her to the depths of her being. And so, her humanism led Raphaela Mary by an excellent path, that of adoration of a God who always takes the side of man. Admiring eyes of Raphaela Mary, eyes open to contemplate, to be aware of the existence and the value of others, to discover that, by way of a thousand presences, God is there as the absolute present. Raphaela Mary is prepared for continual adoration. In May of 1890, Raphaela Mary left Spain for the first time. She went to Rome. Such a journey was fairly unusual, and this explains her attention to all the details of the way, which she describes in the letters from those days. She goes contemplating, and comments on her impressions. How many children God has? Seeing the world stirs up one zeal. It seems an ingenuous exclamation, but gives an exact expression to her sense of vocation, characterized by her contemplative gaze on the world. Raphaela Mary, seer of God, knew how to find God in all things. Through them and with all creatures, she could adore. See. Contemplation of the God who passes through her own life. Some events of my life in which I have clearly seen the mercy and providence of God. This is the beginning of an autobiography, which, unfortunately, was never completed. Maffaila relates only the encounter with God that she experienced at the unexpected death of her mother. At that moment, she was an adolescent starting on the way of maturity at the hand of God, both providence and friend. It is a moment of fullness in the midst of sorrow, distinct enough, of course, from the experience of finding herself facing the sea or any other marvel of nature. In the death of her mother, Raphaela Mary contemplates the mercy and providence of God. She observes its rhythms, sometimes incomprehensible, and practices fitting her own steps to the rhythm of a God for whom a thousand years are like yesterday, a past, a watch in the night, and she adores the mercy and providence. Years later, in 1893, being in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, she contemplates as in a flash, the film of her existence. Let us listen to the exact words of her account. Saw God very great and herself very small, but happy. She realized in that moment how God goes on acting, filling her littleness. God goes on doing everything, and she contemplated his work with grateful admiration, as always she was in adoration. At the same time, although in a very different state of mind, she contemplates God, who, like a father, opens her understanding to the knowledge of things, anticipates events, insists with tenderness that she sees and understand the signs on the way, even, by means of a loving pain, the little backward steps. I fear Jesus passing by, said St. Augustine, inking of the terrible human possibility of ignoring God's step. It does not seem that Raphaela Mary needed that holy fear. She was more than awake, with her eyes and her heart open to that God who passed by in every happening, to God installed in her life. Communion and Community 
Now my dears, while we are still at the foundations, let us go down deeply, so that the strong winds which come will not be able to demolish our building. Let us all work together as one, so that there is no crack into which the devil might be able to put his claw and cause disunion. All united as one in everything like the fingers on a hand, thus we shall succeed in anything we do, because we have the Lord for our own. This paragraph is taken from the famous letter, written in January 1884 to the Cordova community. Where there is no union, there is no God. She wrote briskly in 1889. May we all be one heart and one soul. 1891. If you want to ease my burden, let me see that you all have one sentiment. Have no more than one heart and one soul. Help one another so that I may help you. Make me happy always, and you also will be happy, and nobody can make you sad. Letter to M. Purissima, the 16th of August, 1891. It would be difficult to find a person more committed to the cause of this communion, which is the creator of a genuine community. The Christian who takes part in the Eucharist learns to become a promoter of communion, peace, and solidarity in every situation. I am ready to give my life for peace. Mother Sacred Heart said in a very confused moment in the history of the Institute. She had learned to involve herself every day in the self-giving of Jesus. This is my body, given up for you. She struggled for reconciliation and peace because she wanted, above all, to contribute to the building up of the body of Christ, the Church, the community, the Institute. Raphaela Mary is an authentic mistress of the theme of reconciliation, although she rarely uses the term, which is so common today. In its place, she uses many other words, conciliate, understand, trust, dialogue, listen, forget offenses and forgive, always forgive. Believe what is impossible to be possible. Always be ready to begin again. In the beginning, Raphaela Mary's great task was to conciliate, rather than to reconcile, prevent ruptures rather than mend them, enjoy living together happily, rather than find herself in the position of needing to pardon anyone. But circumstances finally made pardon and reconciliation necessary, a reconciliation which was, above all, a constant construction of unity. Conciliate, the dictionary offers reconcile as a synonym. But for Raphaela Mary, conciliate meant making attitudes and ideas compatible, bringing harmony into personal relations. She understood to perfection the importance of the role that had fallen to her in life. This is my body. The permanent surrender of Jesus was a daily demand in the construction and the reconstruction of the unity of the Institute from its beginnings and along the years. How much effort went into using the opinions of others, adopting their happy suggestions, however slight, what hard work to create currents of sympathy and understanding among the sisters. How much trust placed in people, how much patient listening. Her program of life from the first can be summarized in the advice given to one of the religious. Do everything to make the life of those around you happy. That are to Mother Maria de La Paz, 1883. And we must keep in mind that the community was not made up of angelical creatures, without any limitations. At that time, as at any other, it was necessary to bear defects with very great charity. Letter to Mother Maria of San Ignacio, 1882. In 1892, a very special epoch began in Rafaela Mary's life. Her efforts for peace would continue to demand conciliatory postures, but would also suppose attitudes of authentic reconciliation. I am ready to give my life for peace. Not just the absence of conflicts, but real peace which creates communion and which constructs the Institute as a family. On 19th of June, before beginning her journey to Rome, a one-way journey, she wrote a historic circular letter. As I have to be away from Spain for some time, on business of our institute. The expression may have been a white lie, but it hid a great truth. She was going to Rome to become the real foundation of the building. She had gone to make peace possible. She went to reconstruct unity, because where there is no union, God is not there. Truly there was no business in the Institute more urgent than this, neither then, nor would there ever be foundations for a building, P400. This is my body given for you, 
This is the chalice of my blood poured out for you and for all. Raphaela Mary literally lived these mysteriously effective words. She lived the Eucharist, which makes the death of the Lord Jesus powerful in us, which enables us to love until the end, to be people of heartfelt mercy. In the daily celebration of the Eucharist, as in the hours of silent adoration, the body which was given, the blood poured out, were a constant stimulus to insist on life. The extraordinary announcement, the risen Christ recognized in the Eucharist. In the Handmaid's present legislation, there is a phrase which certainly expresses the profound meaning of the apostolic activity of the Institute. Because we recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread, we know we are sent by Him to all people, and we work to bring the news of the resurrection to every human situation. Application of the Constitutions 3. This was the great motivation of Raphaela Mary's activities, a woman who strove to model her own life on the life of Jesus, especially in the Eucharist CF Spiritual Notes, 1896. In the first years of the Institute, Raphaela Mary explained its essence as a true love of our Lord in the Eucharist and the concern of his divine heart for the salvation of souls. Letter to Cardinal Benevides, 1881. It was in response to her Eucharistic vocation that she undertook all her activities and took so many risks. Her concern was always to make known the love of God manifested in the Eucharist and to draw people to recognize this love and know they were saved by it. In every place and circumstance, she had wanted to place Christ for the adoration of the peoples. The Eucharist illuminated the paths which the sisters trod daily in every direction. In Madrid, as in Cordova, Jerez, Saragossa, or Bilbao, opening the doors of a new church had been an expressive way of telling the people that the immense God is at the same time the one who is incredibly close. The extraordinary dedication of the first handmaids to the worship of the Eucharist was something more than a gift for themselves. It was also a charge, an authentic apostolic mission. The development of such a mission was a demanding responsibility for Raphaela Mary during the years of her government. I came out of my retreat very encouraged and happy to be able to do something for my Captain Jesus, especially putting him for the adoration of the peoples. She wrote in her retreat notes in 1890. In this same retreat, thinking deeply as on other occasions about what God's love means for man, she said, I drew a great deal of compassion for infidels and heretics, who are blind to these benefits from God, and great desires to do what I could so that they should know and love him, and if I can do nothing else, by prayer. She then alluded to St. Francis Xavier, and his persistent courage in working for the glory of God. She felt that she like him was missionary. The passion for God, which devoured her throughout her life, made it possible for her to run in the way of an apostle, even in the darkest years of apparent inaction. When I see myself without any physical action to extend my zeal, which is what I desire so intensely, I must be satisfied with praying and doing gently whatever may be my part, as my Lord teaches me. Spiritual Notes 10, 1890. From 1892, Raphaela Mary had no occasion to undertake new works in the Institute. When she left Spain for Rome in that year, she left an established series of living communities, enthusiastic, scented on the Eucharist and pouring themselves out in service to others. From 1892, other people would go on extending the Institute, placing Christ for the adoration of the peoples, working so that all men and women would receive the extraordinary announcement that He lives and loves us. It fell to Raphaela Mary now to collaborate, encourage, give her life and the treasure of her constant lovableness. Now, as never before, to help them to open their hearts to the dimensions of the world. Message to young people at the closing of Vatican Roman II. She found it hard to understand people who turn in on themselves with small domestic interests. She often said that she was ready to cross distant oceans to proclaim the love of God to everyone. She would have been delighted to go to mission lands. It was not possible, but her vehement desires were mysteriously efficacious. She had faith and hope in the midst of the darkness of her hidden life, a very concrete faith and very specific. She believed in the vital force of seeds, which bear fruit precisely by passing through an apparent death. She believed in the need for foundations, which are not seen but which support the building. Celebrating the Great Feast of Life 
Raphael and Mary wanted to use all possible forms to show that the Eucharist is the great feast of life, giving thanks continually, converting existence into a song to mercy. This is the consistent attitude of one who believes in the love of God. In 1905, very advanced in her spiritual process, she wrote a key text. I am in this world as in a great church. It is possible that while writing these words, she recalled many moments of fullness lived in the joy of contemplation of nature the sea, the snow, the starry night, scenery fleetingly glimpsed from the window of a train. Looking with sympathy at children's faces, the excitement of youth, her own enthusiasm at taking up the adventures of God. Now in 1905, she understands that everything has a marvelous simplicity, all is motive for thanksgiving. It is a time of Eucharist. So are the difficult times, the bitter blows in which faith is needed and hope against all hope. I am in this world as in a great church, and I, its priest, ought to offer continual sacrifice and continual praise. It is always the time for adoration, for offering her life, for striving to create bonds of communion, for forming a united family, with one single heart and one single soul, to make the reparative mission possible for the sake of all men and women. Love, adore, serve, and celebrate joyfully. Authentic joy is the background music of Rafaela Mary's life and her living of the Eucharist. She wanted this joy to be expressed in the symbols and gestures of the liturgy. She could not bear routine, bad taste, that kind of mental laziness or lack of imagination that leads to unnecessary repetition of gestures. The one who gives us joy, even though hidden in the sacred host. The fundamental religious experience of Raphaela Mary is that of the immense God, who is, at the same time, incomprehensibly close. He is the Lord of life, Lord of the universe, attentive to each person with a loving and omnipresent providence. Raphaela Mary lives in him with the joy of a limitless confidence and peace. She walks in his presence, she is as if submerged in the fathomless sea of his immensity. She is his creature, and so much the happier the more she experiences the limits of her own condition. What happiness to have so great a God, and we are to possess this immense God fully for all eternity, and now we possess him in the blessed sacrament, and he comes every day into our hearts. This indeed is a fathomless sea. This paragraph, occurring in a letter to a religious who was going to embark for the first time, expresses deep daily living the passionate search for God in all things, and the constant encounter with the divine image reflected in every creature. This image turns her inexorably towards the origin, the center, God who is immense and close, mysteriously palpable, in the Eucharist. In the beginning and in the end, the only worthwhile thing is to adore. For Raphaela Mary, Eucharistic adoration, received as the specific charism through the Institute of Marie Reparatrice, was from the beginning a great gift, a sacred duty, the life and joy of our houses, the principal object of our meeting. These expressions are repeated literally in many of the early writings. One of the first handmaids had no hesitation in affirming that the Institute is founded on the charism of adoration of the Eucharist, that it is its life, as the root is the life of the tree without which it dries up and dies. There was no danger of this root drying up. The life of the handmaids was fed from it and the joy of their apostolic fruitfulness. In the center of the communities, Jesus Christ was the one who gives us joy, although so hidden in the sacred host. These words from Raphaela Mary pointed to an eschatological future in which there would be no veils or coverings and the joy of adoration would be consumed in final blessedness. In the minds of Raphaela Mary and of Pillar, the sacred duty was also a desire of commitment to the ecclesial community, to place Christ for the adoration of the peoples, to do everything so that all may know and love him, sharing with everybody a vocation that led to the experience of a celebration. It is always a feast day for us with the exposition of the blessed sacrament, so Raphaela Mary expressed it on a certain occasion, as if to say that for handmaids and for those who share their charism, it is always the feast of Corpus Christi. At the end of her life, Raphaela Mary was pure transparency, her daily existence, total adoration. But we must not think that this kind of existential praise supplanted a Eucharistic adoration localized in times and places. While she had reasonable health, 
she took part faithfully in the community turns of adoration, which made it possible to place Christ for the adoration of the peoples and churches open to all. The growing understanding of the immense God, which certainly filled her with joy, enriched her daily appointment with the practice of adoration proper to her life as a handmaid. The Times of Adoration in the Life of Raphaela Mary From what we have just said, we can understand why we have put times of adoration into inverted commas. For Raphaela Mary, any moment was good for adoration, as it was good for serving, for consoling, for encouraging, for conciliating, for building up. But in the course of the day, there was always a privileged moment to nourish these attitudes and to express the thanksgiving of a whole life, Constitutions 5. This time called adoration, which breaks into the narrowness of our limits so that we enter into God's time, a moment of apparent rest and of absolute freedom. In letters and spiritual notes, there are brief references that allow us glimpse what was activity and rest for her in those moments. We also have the testimony of those who saw her body ecstatic before the blessed sacrament and imagined what her spiritual posture would be, but without being able to grasp the whole of it. We can affirm one thing. In each one of her adorations, Raphaela Mary made herself present to the presence. She was open to God just as she was living at that moment and allowed him to act, always in admiration at this work in her. The spontaneous response to that immense God, always waiting on his tiny creature, was a joyful thanksgiving. During the examination of conscience which I made before the blessed sacrament, I saw my God very great and myself very small, but I did not shrink. Rather I opened up, because I saw that God was what he was, and that I am what I am. Seeing myself small I am in my center, because I see all that God does in me and in my things, which is what I want. Spiritual Notes 10 Being open to the presence, exposing herself, before the blessed sacrament exposed, often meant a real risk for Raphaela Mary the unconditional acceptance of difficult ways, dark and uncertain, by which she advanced in faith. When she remembered before the Eucharist the love that led Christ to death and lived it again, she took the risk of the consequences of love to the end. And it was not only a risk, but an absolute reality that she embraced with total generosity. In one of her spiritual notes, she writes that she does not want to be protected to shelter from the difficulties, but to face the bullets, if necessary. Following on from the previous attitude, we find the posture of adoration of the divine will. The adoration that supposes the loving acceptance of any happening, as coming from the hand of God, and that Raphaela Mary repeatedly actualized when she was taking her turn in the community adorations. I am so convinced of this, that I can never ask that so many sufferings should have an end, but that the will of the Lord should be accomplished in me, even though it should cost me my life, and mechanically, ceaselessly, I bow my head, especially before the blessed sacrament. Letter to Father Miruzebel, SJ 1892 I must give myself wholly to obedience I saw this in the 12 o'clock adoration, January 1909. Spiritual Notes 1909 A great part of her adorations was occupied with prayers of intercession. From her place on the Predio, Raphaela Mary feels in communion with the whole of humanity and prays for the needs of the Church and of all people. On one occasion, she writes that she wants to model her life on that of Jesus in the Eucharist, and in consequence, identified with the one who said, This is my body which is given. She wants to burn and be consumed so that not one may be lost. Model my life on his mortal life or the one he has in the blessed sacrament burn and be consumed so that not one may be lost. I shall pray with great determination for the salvation of souls. I shall not rest from this determination. Spiritual Notes 1896 In prayer as in apostolic work, Raphaela Mary always felt a member of the Institute, an integral part of a body and responsible for a mission. Her special personal situation from 1892, set apart from officially entrusted tasks, caused her great suffering. She could legitimately question now what her function was, what would her work be, and again, the time of adoration helped her to situate herself once more within the conditions that surrounded her. With great affliction, in the adoration, 
I confided to our Lord certain fears with regard to the congregation, with the great confidence that he knows how to give at times. And to make me understand, he showed me that it was sheltering under his mantle. I saw the whole congregation, as it were dependent from his eyes, and he seemed to say to me, This is your task. Pray without ceasing and without taking your eyes off me. On this depends all its good. Letter to Father Miruzabal, 1893. With my desires, which are very strong, I work with everyone. Letter to Mother Maria de la Cruz, 1897. In all the stages of her life, the time of adoration was, beyond any other consideration, a time of living and expressing love. With the passing of the years, her adoration became deeper and deeper, and at the same time simpler. Mother, someone asked her in later life, what do you say to the Lord during the long time you stay there? Nothing, she answered. I look at him and he looks at me. At these heights there was no need to prepare discourses. Some time previously she had written, my way is not to say many prayers, but to pray a great deal. As life went on, her prayer and her adoration had simplified to the extreme. She looked, she admired, she burnt with humble love, and asked and hoped as a grace that love that conquers all. Conclusion Could we dare to make some recommendation from Raphaela Mary here and now, for us who are here in the Eucharistic Assembly and for the rest of our family? She, a pilgrim of God along all the ways of life, through a thousand circumstances and some really dramatic ones, would recommend us keenly not to leave aside the guidebook that she always had at hand, the Gospel. Some quotations always struck her, memory of the heart, take, eat, this is my body. If I, your Master and Lord, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. And there is no doubt that she constantly returned to certain passages. The accounts of the Last Supper, and the narration of the soldier's lance opening the side John chapter 19 verses 33 to 37. All the rest was pure consequence, the blessing promised to the meek, the praise of simplicity and humility. She would remind us with all affection that the creature is nothing without the all-powerful strength of God, that she, Raphaela Mary, had always experienced her own weakness, and sometimes with great sorrow, but had always lived in the conviction that love can do everything, as if she were writing at any moment. She had in mind her own words written in 1890. The creature is so weak that it believes itself to be powerless to respond. What can she do then, my Lord and my God? Love and more love. Love conquers everything. Do not give up asking for this love. Spiritual Notes 20 Surely she would have great pleasure reading number 4 of the present constitutions. She would be filled with joy, and she saw confirmed her own experience that it is the Eucharist itself which, in an incomprehensible and merciful way, constantly carries out the transformation of heart. The charism of the Eucharist means believing in love in a special manner, strength in weakness and fullness of joy in life. In her last years, Raphaela Mary used to repeat with immense desire the request of the disciples to Jesus, Stay with us, Lord, because it is towards evening. Main nabiscum, domine. These were the words John Paul II used to begin the apostolic letter with which he opened the church's reflection on the year of the Eucharist. The Pope remembered how the disciples felt their hearts burning while their companion on the way explained the scriptures to them and enlightened their eyes to understand them. In the twilight of that evening, the companion awoke hopes that were sleeping, almost dead. Such was the strength of his word and his presence. The introduction to the apostolic letter suggests one more evocation of Raphaela Mary. In her simple room in Roman 20 September, Rather dark, and even more so as evening falls, she feels her heart burning with humble love. At the table of bread and word, she has been opening her eyes to the exact understanding of the scripture, and now sees herself inundated with the total light of the risen one. On more than one of those days, her handwriting still firm, she copies a paragraph from the meditations of Father Lapointe which has touched her soul. O oh good Jesus, stay with me because the day of my life is coming to an end and now I have even more need of your presence. You said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. 
and we shall both come to him and remain with him. I desire to love you and obey you with all the affection of my heart. Stay with me, Lord, so that I can fulfill my desire and reach eternal life where I shall always be with you. Amen.